Welcome to AWS What's New. I'm Jeff Barr. I've got three cool launches to share with you today. First up, some great news for you mobile developers. AWS Amplify helps you to build scalable, full stack, mobile, and web applications on AWS. You can configure app backends for storage, data, authentication, and so forth, and connect your app to those backends in minutes. You also get support for many popular web and mobile frameworks. You can even host static and single page websites and deploy them with just a few clicks. Amplify already supports the Android, iOS, React Native, and Ionic frameworks for mobile development. So today's news, Amplify Flutter is now generally available. It allows you to build Android and iOS applications from a single code base. During the developer preview, we added data, API, and auth capabilities. On the data side, the Amplify data store gives you a local programming model. This makes it really easy for you to work with distributed cross-user data. On the API side, the new API capability, that lets you make signed calls to GraphQL and REST endpoints. And on the auth side, you can set up an OAuth 2.0 flow using a hosted UI. The code for Amplify Flutter is hosted on GitHub. There's also an active Discord community around it. To learn a whole lot more, read Martin's blog post and the what's new. Amazon RDS, that's the Relational Database Service, has supported read replicas since way back in 2010. When you use this feature, writes go to the main database instance and are then tracked on the read replicas. You've got full control over the placement of the read replicas. You can put them in different regions than the main instance or in different AZs in the same region. So what's new today? You can now use filters to exercise control over the databases and the tables that you want on each of your read replicas. You can use this for security and compliance purposes, or you can create replicas that are tuned for specific use cases, such as analytics. The filters are available for database instances running MySQL and MariaDB. You can use inclusion or exclusion filters for your databases and the same for your tables. The filters for your tables can also include wildcards, and the filters are specified in the parameter groups for each read replica. To learn more, read that what's new. And next, more EC2 instance types in more places. Here's a quick review. Inf1 instances on SageMaker in 14 additional regions. Graviton 2 based M6G, C6G, and R6G instances in Stockholm. M6GD, C6GD, and R6GD instances in Northern California and Tokyo. And the ultra-fast M5Z instances in Singapore and Sydney. Blog posts are available for all these instance types. And finally, we got our first question. This one from Michael Viverito. He asks, so TimeStream DB is kind of like InfluxDB? I generally don't talk about competitive products, and I certainly don't know enough about it, InfluxDB to really go into de depth. Let me just tell you a little bit more about TimeStream. Both these offerings are designed to store time series data. TimeStream will scale to trillions of events per day, and you can ingest data from other AWS services. TimeStream lets you store data without having to predefine your schema, and you can access it using some simple SQL queries. Your data is encrypted, it's replicated across three AZs, and is backed up to S3. Maximum retention period is an amazing 200 years. Thanks for that great question, Michael. And that's all for today. As always, we look forward to your feedback. You can send us an email, a tweet, or you can leave a comment below. If you've got a question about anything I've shared today, please send it my way. I'll pick the best one each week. I'll share it in a What's New video. To see some more videos just like this, subscribe to our channel, click that bell for notifications. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again soon.